Hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming along today. My name is Joyce. I am a partnerships manager at Governance for Schools, and I oversee Southwest England and Wales. And today I am also joined by my colleague, Harriet. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Harriet Bowen. I'm another partnerships manager at Governance for Schools, and I look after sort of Hampshire, Berkshire, Sussex and Surrey. And I'm really looking forward to presenting to you all today. Cool. Um, welcome, everyone. We're going to be talking about who governance for schools are, what school governance involves, and why you'd like to get involved, and of course, how you can sign up in the end. Um, we also have two guest speakers with us today from the university, and they will be sharing their experiences as school governance with us. Um, we also will have a QA and a session at the end, so please put any questions you have in mind for this in the chat. We'll come to the most common questions at the end after the presentation. So let's begin. Um, we have been working in England for over 20 years. And in fact, this is our 25th anniversary. Really exciting. Um, we are here to improve education through effective governance and launch our service in Wales in November 2020. And we know that having talented and committed volunteers active in school boards can transform a school. So we work with schools to understand what they need with schools registering their vacancies with us for free. When schools register their vacancies with us, they let us know if there are any specific skills or experience that they're looking for. Um, and then we'll work with our volunteers, which could be you guys, to find the best match and then make introductions. Um, during your time with us, we provide ongoing support so that you can develop your skills in the role and have the knowledge to succeed from the very start. We also aim to not only find volunteers with the right skills, but to ensure that boards are representative of the wider community and we're successful in engaging a broad range of people. Now I'll pass a I'm to Claudia to talk about why do we have these partnerships? Thanks, Joy. So hi, everyone. My name is Claudia Lusardi, and I'm an outreach projects manager for a partnership called Study Hire. And Oxford Brookes University are the lead university in that partnership. I've been a school governor since January 2022, so almost two years now. Um, and I'm governor for a secondary school in Abingdon called Fitzharry's. And in our local governing board, each governor has what's called a portfolio role. So we focus on one specific theme. So I'm the lead governor for disadvantaged and vulnerable students at, Fit at Fitzharry's. So I'm going to speak as briefly and efficiently as possible to some of the bullet points on this slide about why the university is partnering with governors for schools. The first point is about the breadth of skills and expertise within the HEI staff and alumni and student body. When I first started as a governor at Fitzharry's, the school had a number of vacancies um, and they did a bit of a skills gap analysis to try and identify what they needed from a governing board. And they had identified three things at the time. They would like, they wanted somebody with data expertise um, who could sort of really understand the data. They were interested in somebody with comms skills, um, especially stakeholder engagement to help improve their engagement with parents. Um, and interestingly, they wanted somebody who knew about estates. And this was about eight months before the rack crisis, that weird concrete issue, which ended up not affecting my school, but did affect a school down the road called John Mason. And my school then had to uh, loan out some space for some emergency teaching whilst John Mason closed down for a period of time. So at the time, I remember thinking, firstly, I don't have any of those skills, but I do work in an organisation where I know all of those skills exist, either because there are academics teaching on the courses teaching those skills. There are students and alumni who have learned those skills or because there's staff who are actually doing those skills as part of their job. So that's kind of how the partnership with Governors for Schools started to develop more. Um, 
The second point speaks to professional development. So I started as a school governor because I was interested in gaining more experience of strategic level responsibility. So I'll speak more to my own experience here, but there is a range of different um, ways that you can develop yourself as a school governor. Um, but in my current day job, my role is very operational. And one of the things that you can um, access in terms of CPD really is um, that bigger picture view. Um, and I found it really interesting, for example, to look at the budget for a school. I've since learned that every secondary school pupil receives £6,000 for their education. And we are able to have a look at all of that money and then how it's spent. And I've generally found that quite fascinating. The third bullet point speaks to social responsibilities and really being a school governor is an opportunity to give back. And if that's something that you're interested in, um, this would be a really great opportunity to do that. There are huge numbers of governors vacancies across England. Um, and I've been able to use my expertise from my day job, which is supporting young carers to progress into higher education within the school setting. Um, and since I've been a school governor, the school has improved their young carer identification and provision. So they now have identified almost double the number of young carers in school and been able to improve the support that they give to those young people. If you are an Oxford Brooks members of, member of staff, um, it's worth just highlighting that Brooks do have a really supportive volunteering policy and I'll put a link to that in the chat. So it's effectively you're able to get one day of paid leave to support your volunteering role and you can choose to either take the whole day off um, or you can split the hours so I've used it in the past for a whole day for an interview panel but I've also split my time um, because as a governor you can do governor visits which are normally themed um, ours last about two hours and you go on a sort of walk around the school and you focus on something like the curriculum or inclusion and so I've been able to do a number of different governor visits by splitting my volunteering leave and I think the final thing to mention um, as an obvious one, but like I said before, there are lots of governor's vacancies across the whole of the UK. Oxford Brooks is obviously local to Oxfordshire and Swindon, but if you have um, a school, primary or a secondary, an academy local to you, um, anywhere you are, there are going to be governor vacancies in your local area. So there's a really wide reach and availability of opportunities for you, no matter where you are. I'll hand you back over to Joyce now, but if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll put that link in the chat now. Thank you, Claudia. And it's so good to see that the university is so supportive of their staff doing voluntary work um, during their work time or even outside of their work time. Okay, moving on. So... Here comes the answer to the question that I believe a lot of you have in mind. What is actually a school governor? Um, like what Claudia just mentioned, the role is strategic rather than operational. Governors do not get involved with the day-to-day -day running of the school. Instead, they work at board level to support and challenge the school's leadership team to drive school improvement. A school governor is passionate about improving opportunities for all young people. And to do this, they volunteer their time, skills, and experience experience to impact the effectiveness of the school that they support. Um, you see quite a lot of bubbles on the slide. Um, they are maybe potentially the reasons why you would like to be a school governor. So if you care about the education that children receive and you want to drive improvement, if you want to make an important contribution to your local community, if you enjoy um, a challenging and rewarding role that helps you grow professionally, um, if you're keen to help all children to do better at school um, now and in the future, um, if you want to bring what you've learned in your professional life onto the board to best support the school, um, if you have one of those thoughts or more, you're in the right place. We are here to support you. So stay tuned to what we're going to tell you about everything about school governance. Um, as you can read on the slide, we need someone who has the time to um, commit to the role, who can be a critical friend to the head teacher or senior leadership, um, who, uh, who is objective, has accountability, provides and applies your specialist knowledge to the role while being a champion of the school. 
you do not need to come from a specific background and you do not need to be a parent or an educationalist either. I think myself is a very good example. I didn't even grow up in the British education system. Um, I only moved to the UK about two and a half years ago and yet I am a school governor myself. Um, so we welcome people from all walks of life. Oh, so here's the why. We have so, so many vacancies, but so few volunteers. And that's why we need you. Um, the pie chart here you see on the slide um, also shows that most vacancies are in the primary phase of education based on the fact that most schools are primary schools. Um, and because I manage Oxford, so I also know the vacancy situation here. Um, the truth is we do have a lot more vacancies in primaries than secondaries or even colleges in Oxford. So with this in mind, we really encourage you to consider being as open as possible when thinking about the type of schools that you like to support. Uh, I. I have talked a lot. I think it's time to introduce some new voices. Um, so we have Helen, who works at OBU, and Dennis, who is an alumnus, to share a bit more about their experiences with all of us. Um, Helen, let's start with you. Thanks very much. Um, so hi, everyone. Thank you for giving up your lunchtime to come along. Um, my name is Helen Hall. I work here at Brooks uh, within the Marketing, Recruitment and Engagement Directorate. Um, so I've worked at Brooks for nearly 10 years now in a couple of different roles. And um, before that, I worked in other universities in roles that were all related to student recruitment or widening access to university. So um, I guess I've had a career that has very much put me in education and thinking about the um, barriers through the education life cycle that some students face. Um, I'm also a mum of two children and a dog, um, and I'm currently a governor at a primary school in Oxfordshire. Um, so being a school governor had been on my radar for a few years because, um, really because of the links to what I do as a job. Um, and as um, Claudia mentioned earlier, that was partly around professional development, but also about a way for me to make an impact outside of the direct role that I had. Um, but I actually, in the end, decided to take the plunge um, when there was a vacancy at my children's primary school for a parent governor and I put myself forward. So for parent governors, there's usually an election process. Um, so parents can put themselves forward and then um, you write a little statement and then other parents decide uh, which person they want to represent them on the on the governors. Um, I decided to go for it because having had, I've got two children in primary school, I work full time in quite a busy job. Um, and I just felt that this was a way of me supporting the school directly that absolutely played to my strengths more than being on the, uh, what's now not called the PTA, but I think of it as a PTA, um, organizing the school fair and things like that. That is not my skill set. So this felt like something that I could do that probably matched my skills that would be directly supporting. Um, so I've been a governor for about 18 months now um, and aside from kind of general input through the regular board meetings and all of the policies and things that come up there, I thought I'd just mention a couple of the things that I've been involved in and um, some will be familiar from examples that have been talked about. So I'm a member of the finance committee um, and so we have a board a that all governors are part of and then we have two committees um, and I'm on the finance committee. Um, and as part of that, I've helped to shape some decisions to improve the financial position of the school. It's a really challenging time in schools for budget. So there's been some quite difficult decisions and I've learned a lot, um, like getting my head around the fact that the academic year runs as it does, but their budgets run in a different like breakdown of the 12 months took a little while compared to work. Um, but looking at the things that um, the funding that came in and how that was spent, um, it was quite a, a big learning curve. I've taken part in governor visits, so as Claudia mentioned, so I took part, particularly one that stands out for me as a pupil voice session around the art curriculum, so with the teacher who's the lead for the art curriculum, um, and I was part of kind of talking to students and getting their feedback, and art is not my expertise at all, um, but what that doesn't matter, what they're looking for is that kind of supportive challenge and understanding of um, uh, helping and, and working with the teachers to think about how they're developing their curriculum, um, not the actual kind of expertise in the subject. Um, I have been involved in 
a particular kind of HR issue as well, which was something that was um, a small group of governors needed to be involved in. And I was able to bring experiences I've got from managing teams and from dealing with similar kind of HR situations within work. Um, I've newly been made the link governor for attendance, which is a, a real kind of national issue at the moment. So that's one where um, I'm going to be working with the head to look at the effectiveness of the school's policies and processes to support attendance, which will include some work with parents as well. So that's a new one for me. I uh, don't quite know what that will involve so far. I would say I thought I'd have loads of issues raised with me by other parents. Um, and I think one of the things that I've learned is that being a parent governor is not about being the rep for all parents. It's about working as part of a team of governors to make sure that the school is operating effectively, that it's running with the children at the heart of it. Um, so I've had a couple of issues raised with me by other parents that I have been able to escalate or able to tackle or be able to advise them because I've got a bit more information about how the school runs. Um, and there's been a little bit of tackling disinformation in class WhatsApp groups. If any of you are parents, you might know the sorts of things I might be imagining. Um, but actually, there's been much less of it that's being about kind of advocating or being a voice for parents and much more about just bringing that perspective into um, the wider running of the school. Um, so finally, for me, I think I've learned loads about the pressures on schools and the challenges that they're facing delivering consistently good education for every child. That's been really useful professionally, bringing that back into my work. It was something that I was aware of, but I think I've got a heightened understanding when we're looking to engage with schools as a university, how that might then land and sit alongside all of the other things that they are trying to do. Um, and I think the thing that I personally enjoy most is feeling that I'm making a contribution to the positive culture within the school. Some of the governors on the governing board have been involved with the school for a long time, for decades. And I think there's a really strong culture and sense of the school community and what they want the values of the school to be. So that wasn't necessarily something I was expecting, but particularly because it's my children's school, it feels quite close to home. And that sense of playing a part in continuing that and the school's role in the community and the values that we have as a school community and how that impacts on the children that come to the school um, feels like a really rewarding way to use what in reality is not a huge amount of my time, but it feels like it really makes an impact. Uh, so happy to help answer any questions in the chat or if anyone wants to reach out after the webinar, um, you can find me in the Google lookup. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Helen. That was really useful um, and encouraging as well. Um, now we have Anes, who is an alumnus. So time over to you. Thanks, Joyce. Um, so I graduated from Oxford Brooks last September, um, and I was currently working in London as a quantity surveyor um, for a tier one contractor. Um, and I joined the, well, I was re I got an email from the, uh, alumni OBU general email sent out to everyone um, about governors that are needed in schools. So um, I applied and I was reached out to by by Joyce and other members in the team to get me placed in a school near me. Um, and funnily enough, I am actually a governor at my old primary school. So that's quite a nice experience to be able to be part of that team and um, that, that group of governors sort of putting in new procedures and stuff for, um, for improving my primary school that I went to. And you can really see the changes that are being made there. Uh, I'm recently been made. Uh, so I've only been there for six months as a governor and I've recently been made as uh, uh, been made the behavior and anti-bullying lead at the school. So um that's just dealing with children that have got behavioral issues in the school and looking at how we can better support and better support them in the school and in the education system and looking at how we can tackle issues of bullying uh, that are currently going on at the school um the school actually has a really good behavioral record so i haven't had a meeting yet but i'm assuming that everything's under control. Uh, I'm also part of the finance committee, similar to Helen, um, and I've only recently joined that. So there was a lot of good steps put in place by the school last year, um, which has resulted in the school ending the 
year with a positive balance. Um, and that's through fundraising efforts and implementing after school clubs, which a lot of the teachers and parents volunteer to assist with. So um, that's resulted in the school ending with a positive balance. And um, I, I do find it a really good experience as you're sort of there not being involved in the day-to-day -day activities and um, really letting the head teacher ha tackle all of those, but you're there as a sort of voice in the background just to give advice and hold the head teacher accountable. Um, and yeah, I find that a really interesting and positive experience to take away into my personal, into my professional career. Um, because there is a lot of communication amongst all the different heads of different committees about what's going on in the school. And um, yeah, it's really linked to my job. As there's a lot of stakeholders that need to be managed as part of my job as well. So that's definitely something positive that I've taken away from that experience. Oh, it's good to see that your school is doing well, having really good governors on board. Uh, we'll definitely come to the benefits of being a school governor um, at a later point of this presentation. But now I'll let Harriet tell us more about what all these roles actually entails. Hello, yes. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the governor responsibilities, um, sort of broadly speaking. Um, so really, a school governor has three core responsibilities. So planning the strategic direction of the school, um, overseeing the financial management of the school, and also holding senior leaders to account as well. So I'm going to go into those three in a little bit more detail. So strategy. As a school governor, you do play a key role in setting the vision for the school and helping the head teacher and other senior leaders to think about how that strategy is built into all areas of the school. Um, asking sort of questions like, is the vision ambitious for every single child at the school? And what's actually in place to make it happen? If the school has a clear vision, it really is and can be the blueprint for every child's success. Um, so you have to think about how children, how staff, how families are engaged and consulted with that strategy and making sure it's clear and embedded. You'll also be involved in things such as policy development and also agreeing the school's development plan. Um, we really do need, as mentioned earlier, a variety and the diversity of skills on a school board. So somebody who has expertise in finance can really help the school budget effectively. Um, an educationalist can help ask the right questions around the curriculum. Um, if you have marketing expertise, then perhaps you can help consider if the school is being presented in the best light to the local community. Um, or if you're just somebody who, who is from that local community to the school, it might be that you can contribute a deeper consideration of local issues that the school is facing. So everybody on this call will definitely have skills or something that they can, they can bring to their local board. Finance, uh, financial management, normally the one where people think, oh, I hate finance, I hate maths, I don't, don't know, I don't know anything. How can I possibly help with financial management? Um, but you, as a governor, you don't like, set the budget or anything like that you simply oversee it um, and ensure that money is spent in line with the strategic vision of the school um, the, the level of responsibility will differ between schools and between boards um, but as as we said earlier as well there on the board there'll be such a variety of people that if finance isn't your thing your expertise there'll be somebody on the board who is more of an expert in finance so you'll learn um, from them and develop skills within this area throughout your time of being a, a, a school governor um really with the 
budget, the main thing to think about is that breadth of competing needs for the budget. Um, so it's really just being able to oversee and ask the right questions as to why and where money is being spent. Um, and then the third one is all around cre creating robust accountability, which is something Dennis spoke about earlier, um, around being able to ask the right questions and making sure that you as a governor are aware of all the information that is available to you. You need to be able to support and challenge the head teacher and other senior leaders. So a good example of this or how you will do this is by looking at the progress and attainment data of the pupils. You'll examine how different groups within the school are progressing. So things like asking what's in place to specifically support children who have a special educational need or disability, or perhaps asking and reviewing what's in place to support support the children who have English as an additional language. Another way that we like to look at this is breaking it down into watchdog, mediator and champion. So as a watchdog, you're there to make sure the right questions are asked and seeking evidence to back up any statements that are being made to you. So don't just accept that what is being reported or planned at face value, but make sure it's there that there is like robust reasoning for it. As a mediator, you'll be juggling the needs of the students, the staff, the parents, carers, as well as more practical things like balancing the budget. Um, you'll also be sat on a board with a variety of people. So you need to be able to bring everyone together, make sure everybody's voice is heard and balance um, sort of all of those opinions. And then lastly, uh, a champion. You need to celebrate the successes of the school. Schools are under enormous pressure and sometimes schools can focus on what they're not quite doing right or that they could be doing better and sometimes fail to celebrate actually what their achievements are. So you're there to sort of celebrate with them and highlight their successes. And as, as a volunteer, if you're passionate about education or pa passionate about children, um, this is the really satisfying part of the role for sure. Next slide, please. Um, thus far, we've been talking about governor, um, but there is something called a trustee. So I just wanted to take a couple of minutes just to highlight this in case this is a role that is of more interest to some people on the call. So in governance structure terms, trustees sit at board level and are responsible for all the schools in an academy trust. So a governor just looks at and is responsible for one school, whereas a trustee is responsible for all of the schools within a multi-academy trust. And a multi-academy trust could have like two or three schools in it, but it could also have like 40, 50 schools in it. And um, so there are a sort of a variety of multi-academy trusts in England. Um, fundamentally, the, the role is the same, though. Um, so you're still asking questions, you're still overseeing the budgets um, and things like that. Um, but it is important to note that the trustee role is a dual role. So as well as being a trustee of the trust, you also operate as a director of a company, meaning that you're listed on company's house and subject to company law. So it is slightly different in that sense. If trustee is of interest to you, then I suggest that you go onto our website and have a look at the page that is specifically around trusteeship just to find out a little bit more. And you can always have a call with um, Joyce or I or somebody else within the team who can help you make the decision as to what is best for you. Next slide, please. Commitment. I like this slide because I always feel like this is the slide where we probably answer most of the questions that people have or will have. Um, so time per month. Based on feedback from our volunteers, the governor role takes on average five to seven hours per month. That will vary, though, depending on whether you take on an additional role, such as the chair of governors. That time will be made up of things like attending meetings, um, reporting um, on any findings that you have following a visit to the school. Um, it'll also include time spent at celebration assemblies and school fairs and all that sort of side of the, the role as well. So it does vary 
um, from month to month and from school to school, but the average time commitment is five to seven hours per month. Term of office for a school governor is four years. So please do consider this as a long term role. It definitely can take a while to get to know the school. Um, so Helen mentioned she'd been in role for about 18 months, but I'm sure she's still learning a lot every day, even though she's been there for a year and a half. So it really does take a long time to to learn and to get to grips with the role and to see the impact as well um, of, of what you are what you're doing. Um, at the end of that four years, you can decide to sign on for another four years. But equally, if your commitment changes, um, you can stop whenever you want to. At the end of the day, this is voluntary. Um, travel. When you apply, you can tell us how far is practical for you to travel to your school that you're supporting. But please do bear in mind that the wider we can search, the better and easier it is really for us to find you a vacancy. So if you can only walk for 10 minutes to a, vac to a school, then you'll be waiting much longer than if you're able to use tra public transport or drive for 30 minutes or up to 45 minutes, for example. Um, some schools do accept remote governors who either attend fully online or partially online. So that's something to take into account as well. And then lastly, uh, before I hand back to Joyce, I just wanted to mention liability. When you join the governing board, you are seen as a collective entity that supports the school. So any decisions or strategic oversight that you provide is seen as a collective. So there's shared liability. What that means is if the board was found to not be supporting the school in a sufficient manner um, or almost sort of let the school down, then it's likely that the whole board will be dismissed um, and you'll sort of be found joint jointly liable for the failure so you just like get dismissed from the board and the school then work with us to create a whole new board there can be misconceptions around personal liability the only way that you can be personally liable is if you have acted criminally so fraud and negligence and things so as long as you act with honest intentions there really is nothing to worry about around liability okay i'm gonna hang back to joyce now thank you cool now let's talk about benefits. There are a lot of benefits to being a school governor. Um, you will develop transferable skills from the wealth of opportunities that being a school governor can offer. Um, and that can be on a professional level or even a personal level. You will have the opportunity to develop experience across a range of skills that you may not otherwise be exposed in your normal day-to-day -day role. Um, our professional development research found that by undertaking a governor role, your confidence increased, your performance was enhanced in the workplace, and there was reported growth in items like preparation, um, flexibility, agility, um, analyze the performance data and KPIs, financial skills and value for money. So lots of good stuff. Um, and I would say every single one of you in this virtual room has a unique skill set to offer. So wherever your skills lie, there will be a school that needs you. And during your term, you will have an impact on the education of hundreds, if not thousands of children. And those children can have a better experience sorry, of learning and higher aspirations and improved life chances because of your impact as part of the board. And here at Governance for Schools, we do more than placing you in the school. Um, we want you to be effective in your governor role as quickly as possible. So we offer a range of free e-learning modules on a number of topics to introduce you to key elements of the role. We also hold regular webinars so you can continue your learning and have the opportunity to ask our um, governance experts questions. And once placed um, at the school, you'll be given 12 months free access to online Governor Hub resource and knowledge band called Governor Hub Knowledge. And in England, all new governors are able to access free learning opportunities through their local authority or MATS, which will be organized through the school. So loads of training, loads of support. If you are completely new, if you don't know what you're doing, don't worry because we've got your back. So what's next? Next is 
over to you. So please check out our website to complete your online profile with your skills and experience, um, school and travel preferences, and a short personal statement that demonstrates your passion and commitment to improving educational standards through governance, which we share with schools during the um, process of finding you um, a good role. And once you've submitted your application, it is also definitely worth checking out our induction e-learning too. Um, you can visit our webinar library and other resources such as a list of abbreviations and acronyms because sometimes it can be quite scary. Like what does SEND stand for? Um, so there's a lot to, 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 to get you started before you even join the board. Um, and as opportunities arise through key contact with FINA partnerships team, if you're based in Oxford um, or Southwest England, then probably it would be me. Um, so I'll be in touch and then I will um, share the opportunities with you to discuss suitability. Each school has a slightly different recruitment process. So once you and the school are happy to move forward, we'll then make the introductions between you guys to talk about next steps. This can be like an initial chat about the role in the school or a meeting with a head teacher um, and a chair of governance or a rather informal visit to the school, you know, to look around or observing a meeting or some school might actually want something that's more formal like an interview. So every school is a little bit different, but whatever that looks like, we're here to keep track of your progress through their processes and to offer support whenever and wherever you need it. And trust me, when we get that, email saying I'm appointed or the trust say XXX is appointed. We get ex as excited as you guys. So we are coming to the end of the webinar, but if you have any questions, check out our website or my email is stated on the slide here. So feel free to email me um, to have a casual chat about schools, um, roles, responsibilities, and so on. Um, I think that's basically it. Now, Let's look at the questions that you guys have. I've just been looking at the um, chat box, although you can use the Q&A function as well. I just wanted to clarify something, Joyce, if that's OK, because yeah. um, a few people have been asking around the link governor. And I, Helen said that she particularly looks at finance. Dennis has said I look at attendance and things like that. So I just wanted to clarify um, that you, be, you become a governor. And then some well, schools also have what they call link governors or governors that basically look at something in particular. Now, all, all boards really will have somebody who particularly looks at safeguarding um, or, or somebody that particularly looks at finance. But the what you are a link for does vary from school to school and it depends on what the school's priorities are. So, for example, somebody, a governor that specifically looks at attendance is probably because that school has an issue around attendance or really wants to improve their attendance. So they'll have a governor there that is specifically asking questions, looking at the data, making sure that the school is doing everything that they can do to improve attendance in that area. And um, somebody in the chat, for example, has said um, they're particularly interested in early years. And, you know, is there something like an early years governor? So again, not all schools will have a governor that specifically looks at early years. However, if the school has a priority with their early years or a particular interest in their early years, and you have a specific skill set that can help develop their early years curriculum and, um, and, and work, then it's likely that you could become an early years link governor. Um, so yeah, it does vary from school to school. But when you apply, you just apply to be a governor and then your specific area of interest or the specific area that you look at will vary depending on that school. I hope that is providing a little bit of clarity. <laughs> the first question is, opportunity sounds really interesting. Well, it really is. Um, and I have a few questions. What does the selection process look like? Um, I would say it really depends on the school. So what we do is we get vacancies registered from a school or a trust, and they will let us know a few of the skills that they're looking for or the experience that they're looking for. And when you fill in your application form with us, it will also tell us um, the skills that you think you have or the experience that you think you have. And if there's a match between you and the school, that's perfect. Then we'll potentially refer you to that school that's 
looking for the skills that you possess, if that makes sense. So that's the kind of selection process that we have on our side. But I think it very much depends on the school. So once we've made that introduction, the school um, would initiate a chat with you to understand you more. Um, and if they think that you are a good fit, or if you feel like the school is some is is an environment that you want want to work in, or the people that you want to work with, then they will tell you the next steps, and then you guys will proceed from there. But of course, if you feel like oh that's not a school for me, um, it's okay. You can let us know, and then we'll try to find you the next match. Question from the same person: Will I be able to work part time and manage my classes while being at school? Um. Like what we said in the presentation, it takes around five to seven hours per month to carry out your governor duty, um, but not every single month you have to do something. For example, like a summertime or Christmas break, uh, you have nothing to do, but um, schools meet once every half term um, and, the, uh, and the meeting time is usually like two hours long plus the travel plus some like reading reports, um, thinking about the reports and stuff. So that would be like five to seven hours per month, approximately. Um, from my experience, I'm also school governor myself. I think it is manageable, but maybe Dennis or Helen can share more about your insight because you guys like work full time, have a very, very busy life. Um, what's your thought on this question? Uh, I mean, I I work eight till five thirty, um, so it's it, with that amount of time at work, it's still pretty manageable. There's really not, it's really not that challenging for the governors. There's you know a bit of report reading, just really you're just there to to question things in in the reports and question things that the the head the head says in the in the meeting um but yeah like if if especially if the school is placed you're placed in is close to you um i really don't think that the time management aspect of it should be um deterring you from being a governor yeah i'd, I'd agree i think um Actually, probably the bigger balance is that it's it's in an evening and I've got primary age children, so it's more balancing it around other things in my life than work necessarily. Um, and sometimes I've found that it can be a bit unpredictable how much prep is needed. So there's always like one meeting in the year where all of the policies get reviewed and it, <laughs> I'm reading all of the policies. Um, you can find it... I. I'll, I find it hard to sometimes think, am I giving all of these policies the attention that they need? But actually we as a governors have been able to feed into that. So now we, um, it's really clear whether it's a standard Oxfordshire local authority policy that's being applied or whether, or changes are highlighted in a particular color. So if you're already familiar with a policy, you can really focus on things that have changed rather than the whole thing again. Um, and I've found for other things, um, like we had a deputy head vacancy that needed a governor on the interview panel and everyone one thing I've meant to say but didn't is that I found everyone really welcoming on the governors it sounds quite intimidating but it hasn't been at all and so that is just a like whatsapp or a email exchange to check who's available so I think you know some people are more able to accommodate things that might be during the daytime than others um I have a lot of meetings in my job so I can normally be quite flexible but I need good lead time for that so a last minute we need a governor for this is probably not something i'll be able to help with but i can help with stuff that you can you can kind of plan a bit more time in yeah um, sorry you go harriet i was just gonna say joyce obviously if you're a member of staff um at oxford brooks university uh, remember that that volunteering policy has been shared but if you're not and you have a separate employer perhaps you're an alumni member um, ask your employer as well, because people are always surprised as to what time they're allowed off. I was actually speaking to somebody yesterday who had no idea that they got 12 days a year um, that they could take for volunteering, which is just crazy. Um, so, yeah, they were like, definitely want to be a school governor. So definitely ask your employer as well as to what time off you can you can have to, to take up this role. Yeah, and I also want to add that when you first join a school board or even in a very initial chat you have with the school, you can ask for their meeting dates and have them like diarized in your diary first and you know if anything clashes. And I'll also say schools 
do not expect that you attend every single event that they have because they all understand that we're busy, we have our own life. And that's that's why we have a board of like eight to 12 different um, adults on the board so that the, the pressure and the responsibilities can be sp like spread on different people. So if say you can make to a meeting because you have some other commitment, just let the clock know in advance and they can arrange or rearrange or have some other measures in place. So don't worry about, you know, you have to like go to every single event or go to every single meeting. You can communicate with the school. But of course, there are expectations that you should be attending a certain numbers of um, meetings or events. Um, otherwise, you're not like really being useful on the board, but everything can be communicated beforehand. Helpful. Um, next question is, do you have to do the whole four years? Could this be changed depending on work changes, location change? You are expected to do four years. Um, but of course, if life suddenly changed, and of course you can resign from your role. But if you already have this idea in mind that maybe I won't be staying in this one place in the next year or in the next two years, I would say it's best to wait till you feel like you might be able to have a more stable location before you apply because it takes time to learn about your role and it takes time to learn about the school. So if you're only staying for one year, it might not be enough time for you to get hold of what the school is actually doing or what this role is actually about. Um, yeah, so 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 that's something to think about. However, we also have something called associate governor. Some schools are looking for associate governor that is more like a project-based governor. Um, so it really depends on the project of the school. Some school might want to have a project in like building stuff or on a project on SCND and they're looking for associate governors. So um, you can, indicate that in your application if you're really interested in being a school governor now and we can see if there are any associate roles around your area if yes then that would be a perfect match because associate roles usually don't last for four years it can be like a few months or a year time so that's also something to think about yeah i've just um answered another question that was in the chat box just around <clears throat> the difference between trustees and governors when it comes to time and responsibility. I've replied in the chat, but just for everybody's awareness, it's the same. So the average time per month is the same. The responsibilities, those three core responsibilities we looked at earlier, is the same. The difference is that you're not just looking at one school. You're looking at all the schools in that multi-academy trust. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fundamentally the same. So I've answered that one in there. Um, think that's all the questions <laughs> cool um if there's no more question then i think we'll draw a close here but um i will send around my email to claudia and and then if you have any questions feel free to email me very happy to answer any sort of questions about school governance um but if there's no more question, thank you so much for attending the webinar. Thank you so much for Dan, Dennis and Helen for your really insightful sharing. Um, and I look forward to reading your application in due time. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.